Hello and welcome to the National Geography Centre's Into the Blue podcast. I'm your host Will and today I'm joined by Hugh Gullick in a two-part innovation special where we'll be learning all about knock innovations. Welcome Hugh. Hi, Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Um, before we get started, I think it'd be just <laughs> nice to sort of get an idea as to sort of what your career is and your background yeah. and your position at knock. Yeah, I'm um, just sort of introduce yourself to the listeners. No, no, that's great. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. Um, well, I'll start at the beginning uh, and and sort of chart my journey to to knock. So, um, for about 14, 15 years prior to joining the NOC, I'd worked in a variety of kind of semi technical, um, commercial type roles at about three or four different large multinational engineering and, and technology development companies. So I started life in uh, aero engine manufacturing. And then I moved into um, uh, more of that, but for a different company. Uh, and then um, a, a final sort of company was sort of coatings, materials and in, in, in aero engines and the offshore environment. Um, so semi-technical commercial roles and, and doing a variety of different things, working various locations around the world as well, which was which was great. And then, you know, for the last two and a half years, I've been here at the NOC. Um, so I'm the associate director for Knock Innovation. Um, and, and really, my role here is to uh, be the face of or front Knox work with, with industry or the commercial world. Um, and we do that through our trading subsidiary, which I look after, and a variety of different channels, which I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about. But um, yeah, predominantly, my role here is, is anything to do with industry. I, I typically deal with and the, the teams that I work with are, are varied, actually. I work pretty much across the whole organization, which is, which is great. So you've seen a lot of exciting tech then in, uh, in, in, in the industry. You know what? I, it's just been crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I've only been here for two and a half years, and I'm still learning every single day. It's just vast. The the science expertise, the tech development, the innovation that's going on. So it's never a dull moment. And then, you know, I've got that comparison with my previous sort of career, if you like, in much more of the, the commercial world, but but still in around technology. So there's some lovely parallels between yeah. the ocean environment up in the up in the air and flying. It's just it's great. Yeah, it's, that's it's totally brilliant. exciting. So I mentioned knock innovations. Yeah. Um I think the best best place to start basically be what is knock innovations. Obviously we talk about knock and the National Oceanography Centre, but yeah. Obviously, I understand knock innovations is something a little bit different to yeah. sort of science and what we do at National Oceanography Centre. So, could you just give us sort of an introduction into into knock eye, which we'll call it from now knock on? Eye. Easier, <laughs> isn't it? I yeah, know. yeah. Lots of the word innovation all yeah. the time. Um, so, so knock eye is um, effectively the uh, the route that we uh, work with industry through. Um, so, put another way, it's the trading subsidiary that we we use um, to work with industry. Uh, wholly owned by NOC uh, itself, yeah. um, and it's just a way of an, an easier way to work with industry. Um, the reason that we have that set up is that there's two main reasons. Firstly, um, NOC as a charity has specific charitable aims that it has to to, to do, if you like, or, or um, uh, all its science has to relate to. And of course, as a limited company, you don't you don't have that. You can do whatever you like, and it's important for NOC to have the flexibility to to do work that's scientifically interesting and beneficial to society, but not always necessarily a hundred percent aligned with its charitable aims. And NOC Innovations or NOC I allows us to to do that. Um, and the other element is. It, you know, it's just kind of easier sometimes for industry to yeah. work with another business, if yeah. that makes sense, rather than rather than a charity. Um, so it provides a very nice way of saying, you know, traditional research funding to knock, work with commercial organisations, knock eye, and that's the general rule of thumb. And um, and we've been around for about uh, uh, we're coming up to about three three and a half years. Right. Um, we we were set up yeah about that time ago. Um, and you know we, we exist in knock we're not some separate yeah. entity you know five miles yeah. down the road we, we we exist in and around everyone here at the NOC yeah. as well so in terms of sort of when when knock i was set up because obviously the, the obviously it's it's large involved in sort of the tech development yeah. and stuff like that so obviously that's been going on for 20 plus years at yeah. knock was there like a was there like a point in hit in, in time where we thought right we need now need to move into sort of a, like you said the business sort of side and, and not separate but create yeah. a different arm from knock was that was there a point in which yeah you thought that was that was necessary yeah i mean there were a number of reasons why we why we decided to to set it up um and i'll talk first about the sort of technology yeah. development and and journey so you know if you go back sort of four or five years ago before knock i was set up 
you know, a lot of the technology that Knock has developed, and you know, you can, we're sitting in this yeah. wonderful workshop, yeah. so you can see if it. You right? want, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see sort of a yeah. lot of tech <laughs> behind us and a lot of our sort of autonomous vehicles behind yeah. us. So, um, yeah, if you want to have a look on YouTube, then then head over to that. But um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. So, so you know, three four years ago, um, this technology was really getting to the stage where um, it was be- becoming used, kind of day in day out to do our science research as, as part of NOC. Right. And, and of course, when we got to that sort of stable place of the technology being, being used operationally, um, we, we really started to think, well, you know, we can either keep this ourselves, this tech, and just use it ourselves, or we could also use it for, for the commercial world and industry and, 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 and all the benefits outside just our scientific research. So, you know, the thinking was by setting up NOCI, that provides a channel for us to use the tech that we currently have for commercial purposes um, and to help the commercial world, you know, effectively work more sustainably. I mean, this equipment here that you, you can see, you know, it runs off lithium batteries. Yeah. You know, it's not a diesel powered engine. Yeah. Um, so it's got some really good applicability in the whole energy transition for the commercial world. So that was one reason. Um, and the other, the other reason really was it's a really, really effective way to engage with industry um, as a business. I think, you know, sometimes when you look at academia research and industry, there's this kind of void in the middle. I think, you know, the commercial world doesn't want to get too academic and yeah. the academic world don't yeah. want to be, you know, they're not commercial. And it provides a very nice um, vehicle for kind of bridging that gap almost right. between academia and the commercial world. And that's great for us because it links us up with organizations who've, got really interesting projects and problems that we can help and, and solve and we get great science out of it which is published and publicly available yeah. so it's this really nice sort of circle so it's those two reasons and and you know you couple that with when knock as an institute um was becoming independent the timing kind of all came together right. at that point three three and a half years ago right. okay yeah that's that's really cool i think Obviously, outside of the tech stuff, is there other stuff that sort of knock does in terms of software and, and things yeah. like that? Yeah, there is. So, you know, we, we've got sort of five, I guess, what you'd call distinct product groups, right. for want of a better term. Um, and I'll, I'll just run through them very, very briefly. So Tidal Software is our kind right. of bread and butter. We've, we've been um, producing, well, originally tide, tide Tables, as we know them, for yeah. many, many years. And over time, we've evolved that to a much more software-based platform, digital solution um, for customers. So that Tidal Prediction software uh, we we have, and that, that is all run through Knock Innovations. Yeah. About 300 customers all over right. the world, a real mix. Um, so software solutions, yes, absolutely. Uh, the other element is uh, we do quite a lot of sort of scientific and technical consultancy both from a kind of engineering perspective but also our core science and we can probably talk about some of the areas that yeah. in a bit but um and, and that would involve you know working with industry on problems challenges questions that they've got where the you know the the the, the core scientific expertise of knock can really help them make better decisions about how they operate yeah. so consultancy and training uh, software solutions um, we have something called data as a service which sounds rather grand but basically <laughs> it's effectively using our technology and our people to go and collect data in the ocean and of course that's exactly what yeah. we do for our science yeah. right so it's yeah. like it's it's so obvious to do that so we use a lot of autonomous technology to go and collect specific data sets for uh, for customers we'll then bring that data back to shore We'll do all the scientific analysis on that. And again, we'll usually p- provide a report or whatever the customer yeah. needs. So it's data and then the service, so data yeah. as a service. Um, so they're, they're, the main, they're the main areas. We also, um, we also host events at the NOC, as, yeah. as you know, um, and we also host events outside of the NOC. So we have a whole events arm. Um, that, again, right. we run a lot of that through Knock Innovation. Yeah. So hugely, hugely varied. Yeah, so there is sort of the interlinking between the business and then the science side absolutely, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We, you know, we, we we would be we would be silly not to stick to what we're good at, right? Yeah. And what Knock is good at is the you know world leading scientific research in the yeah. ocean environment and technology development to support that. And, and that's what we stick to through Knock Innovations. Yeah. We just we just package it yeah. in a very specific you bring it, way. You're bringing it into industry. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So a bit more about industry. So. 
what kind of role does Nokai play in in the wider industry in terms of sort of the sort of areas that we cover and the partnerships we have? Yeah. So what role does that what does it play? No, it's 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 a really good question. So we we like to think of ourselves more as a a kind of enabling partner. Um, you know, but we're not we're not a traditional business, right? Yeah. So we we can't compete like for like with a lot of other commercial organisations that operate in the ocean um, space. So so we tend to try and identify organisations that have got um, key decisions to make in their technology roadmaps or strategies, right. and or those that have got some big decisions to make as part of their sustainability um, strategy and their right. energy transition. And, and when we do that, we, we often start talking to them and uncover a whole range of, of, of topics and questions and challenges that they're facing um, that they just simply don't either have the scientific horsepower to, to work on or, or look at, or, or actually they've just got other priorities. I mean, these guys have to, they make their money from working in the ocean and that's the core of their yeah. business. So we, we supplement that with our scientific expertise and we try and help them make better decisions yeah, about how they work lot in the ocean like space. Collab, more of a collaborative thing, it, it, and a bit of really like guiding them in the right direction. It, 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 it really is. Yeah, we're, we're not, you know, we're not just trying to sell ourselves. You know, we, we want to work on interesting, scientifically challenging problems to come up with solutions that, that really help them. So it's really difficult to say we've got a product line of the yeah. same thing because no two projects are the same. Yeah. They're always very, very different. Yeah. Um, but you're absolutely right. It, it's that collaborative partnership approach and and you know if you look at the last sort of three years you know we've, we've got people that we started working on started working with really early on and we still work with them now yeah. and, and it's it's really like a journey yeah. approach right so a bit obviously we touched on a bit but some, some of the partnerships we have so is it is it uk based or worldwide or are there sort of businesses that are uk based but then do a lot of work outside of the uk is it is it, it a worldwide sort it, of thing that we it, do so we work globally we yeah. do work globally um it's a bit of a mix in terms of our cus customer base or, or, right. or partner base. What I would typically say is it, it, it's probably predominantly UK organizations, yeah. but they work globally. Yeah. And, and we're able to, to, to do that as well. Um, that's not to say we don't work directly with a Canadian company, for example, because we do. Yeah. Um, but, but in the main, UK with a global remit. And, and that's anything from uh, you know offshore energy, renewables and the like, um, uh, the defence sector, so we work quite closely with the right. Royal Navy, 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 okay. Navy. <laughs> um, also, uh, sort of oceanographic services, so things with like the Met Office, yeah. pe people like that. So, anyone who sort of operates in that ocean space, um, we, you know, we really think that we've got something yeah. to work with. So them it would on. be it would be people. So it would be people who would be working with us on the science as well in a, in different areas it, like Met correct. Office obviously would be working on a various other things with us. So uh, absolutely. And, and I, you know, f for me as kind of trying to set the direction of our sort of commercial work, the absolute jackpot is, you know, a, a project that is scientifically interesting for us and we can, we can publish yeah. to share that with the world. Something that provides a really science based and um, really good uh, report or, or solution to a commercial customer that helps them work in a more sustainable way yeah. in the ocean um, and aligns with our science yeah. research. So I guess you, if you hit those three things, that is the yeah. absolute jackpot. So I guess it's going back to kind of saying, you know, we're working with the sort of vast resources we have at NOC to use it in a more commercial and, and using it with outside of NOC with other, and sort of to help yeah. other businesses basically exactly. enhance what they're doing I, exactly but sort of allowing it to use sort of our resources at the same time exactly are there any projects we're working on now that are, are sort of particularly exciting or, or are going in a really good direction yeah so we um so we've got a a partnership with a um a large um sort of offshore energy organization who are involved in renewables and a whole range of, of different things all over the world and this has been going for just over a year now and um and we work with them on specific areas of scientific interest where we can share that information um, with the public for the health of our oceans yeah. effectively. So we've got one, um, one particular project within that partnership, um, which is effectively a box of different sensors right. that we have developed. And we attach that onto some of their ROVs, their remotely operated vehicles that they send down to 
to do stuff yeah. um, uh, in the ocean. And, and as they're doing their work, our sensors are collecting all this various information about the ocean. And it's all to do with the carbonate system, which gives you a really good indication of the health of the ocean. So they're doing their operational work. Yeah. We're collecting all this data because we're effectively attached to yeah. their machine. We take that data and we we interpret that. We do research with it and our science, and it gives us helping to build up a really interesting picture of of the health of our ocean. And of course, the longer you do that, and the more of these sensors yeah. you incorporate onto all these vehicles around yeah. the earth, it's you know you're almost you're sort of filling in a jigsaw, so oh. you're getting a really interesting picture of the of the health of of the ocean. Now, clearly. You know, we want more of these everywhere. Yeah. We want to be doing it, you know, for 10 years. But we've got to start somewhere. And it, and that that's a really scientifically interesting um, uh, partnership for us. But for the, for the commercial organization, it's just such a great way to get involved in, in sort of science for, for, for science sake, but also something that's really, really important given all the challenges we yeah. face as, as humanity. Yeah. Um, so it's a great way for them to engage their workforce, come in here, see the things that we're up to, for us to do the same. Uh, so that wider learning, it, it's just fantastic. Yeah, it's so certainly a great, great project. Long term thing as well. Oh, That's absolutely. Go for a long time. Yeah. And, and, and I see it growing. You know, I think there's there's more projects we've looked at with them in the pipeline, looking at, you know, geo hazards and deep sea canyons and a whole range of a whole range of things. Yeah. But it, for me, it's all about building up a picture and an understanding of the ocean but also at the same time providing them with a solution for operating in a more effective and sustainable manner. And, and that's, that's a great example of that. I yeah. also wanted to touch sort of briefly on, on the Glider Service Centre. So that's yeah. opened fairly recently. It has. Um, yeah. Do you want to give us sort of a bit of a lowdown on, on what that is and what, what kind of it offers? Yeah, sure. So, um, so s certain technology that NOC uses to do research, um, uh, some of it is called, it's called a glider, right? So effectively describe it in simple terms a long tube with some, yeah. <laughs> some wings and that basically goes through the ocean and does a seesaw shape and right. collects data and we've got a large fleet of those i think you know nearly over 40 of them we use them day in day out bread and butter data collection method for knock now those gliders are designed and manufactured by a, an organization in the u.s um called teledyne who we've got a great relationship with and have yeah. have for years but we've got the capability on site here to service and maintain our own gliders makes complete sense. And, and, and what we sat down with Teledyne and said was, well, look, you know, you sell all these gliders to different people all over the world, but they have to send them back to you in, you right. know, in the U S to get them serviced and maintained every year, you know, a bit like a kind of car dealership yeah. to be honest, but we've got, we do, we service and maintain our own. So, so why don't we set up our, our workshop here? To, to almost be uh, uh, like a sister one to your one in the US. Right. So for those customers that you've sold equipment to in the UK, they don't need to send it to the US, they can send it here. So they've got a regional kind of solution. Um, and, and that makes just, it's, it's complete common sense, yeah. right? Uh, of course it is. Um, but I think only recently we've, we've been in the stage where we've, you know, we've, we've been resourced, we've been set up well enough to, to, to do that at volume. So uh, first glider came through a few weeks right. ago, which is great. <laughs> and, um, and, and we're continuing to see more and more interest and get that kind of pipeline from European customers. Um, so really pleased about that project. It makes complete sense, it cuts down yeah. on logistics, you know, all of that, that good stuff, um, which is, which is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Garage for gliders then. Garage for gliders. Yeah. I love it. I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to use that. Use yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think that's, that'd be a great point to sort of end on part one. Um, sure. part two, we'll be talking a lot more about the innovation center, which is obviously underpins a lot of what we do at, at a knock art. So yeah. yeah, thanks for joining me. No problem. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Knock Innovations, uh, head over to our description where there'll be a link to the Knock Innovations website uh, and make sure to follow on follow us on social media and follow the Into the Blue podcast on your favourite podcast app to make sure you don't miss out on part two where we'll be talking about the Innovation Centre. We'll see you in the next episode.